Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magnar Nordahl, I am an uh, captain and instructor on ATAR aircraft and this is Q&A number 12. We have six questions, so let's go straight into it. Number one, hello Captain Magnar. Did ATAR ever agree with the findings and conclusions that the NTSB came out with regard to airfoil icing and boots? Thank you Captain. Um, I think you are talking about American Eagle 4184, an accident that happened in 1994 when an ATR-72 entered severe icing in holding. I think ATR had some mixed feelings about it, but they complied with the recommendations from the NTSB. I have made a video about this accident and you will find a link in the description below. It's a long story, but here are the main uh, topics. In the accident report, NTSB concluded that the aircraft was certified in accordance with the current regulations. But since 1981, NTSB had recommended for FAA to uh, revise the uh, icing certification requirements to include freezing rain. Uh, this regulation was first updated in 2015. The NTSB blamed the French and American authorities for inadequate oversight of the aircraft type and they blamed ATR for inadequate response to earlier incidents where there had been an aileron reversal in uh, icing. Some relevant information provided by ATR had not been forwarded to the pilots in the company before this accident. After the accident, ATR made changes to the aircraft, enlarging the de-icing boots, they changed the procedures to be more precise, and they demonstrated that the aircraft could fly in uh, super cool liquid drops. Today, NTSB is still critical to aircraft with manual ailerons. That's the big thing for them, because an aileron reversal can be avoided if the ailerons are powered by hydraulic power. And there have not only been ATR that had this issue, but also Embraer 120-8 and Sat340. Okay, I recommend you to watch the video. A question with the ATR Neo Next Gen Design moving to electric DIs rather than boots. How much spare electric load was available in the AC Wild? Will this mean more of the upper wing surface can be protected as the device boots did not deal with high angle of attack? Uh, I think you mixing this. Uh, high angle attack means uh, IC form on the underside of the wing, not on the top. Uh, wouldn't larger surface electric heating pull quite large loads? In my mind, the ATA airframe is not so big that the pneumatic system weight would be so high as, say, the 787 going full electric. The current AC valve system on the ATR doesn't have the capacity to heat the wings, I'm pretty sure about that. But the new ATR version, it's called EVO, and it will have hybrid propulsion, so I think there will be a total new power plant, as the existing power plant may not uh, fit well for a hybrid solution. Okay. In some planes, the HC200, for example, I think you mean the Dash 8 200, there is a lighting switch for storm. What kind of lights are these and why specific to a storm? ATR also has storm lights and they are bright lights that illuminate the instrument panel and the intention is to use them when you are flying close to a thunderstorm to avoid the crew to be blinded by the lightning. Okay. Hi Magnai, any comment on SQ321? I will not speculate in why this uh, accident happened. They encountered severe turbulence and uh, we, I don't know if the crew got any warning in advance or not. So I leave that to the investigation. But one thing is very clear, always wear your seatbelt when seated, even if the seatbelt light is off. Why didn't the ATR decide to make the spoiler extend during touchdown? I know they have only incorporated this on 42600S, S for stall, but not on all other ATR aircraft type. The spoilers on ATR are much smaller than on Dash 8, and they have one uh, purpose, and that is to assist the aileron 
when you deflect the ailerons up. They will have a little effect on landing, but for a short take of a landing version, every little uh, detail counts. So that's why they make them to deploy on landing. And the final question. Thank you again. May I ask another question? Being how turboprops like ATS-72 compare to heavy and medium jets in terms of acceleration, rate of climb, deceleration and rate of descent? Uh, turboprops have a good initial acceleration that makes them suitable for short runways. But in the long run, the jets will continue accelerating up to much higher speeds. Um, so the winner is the jet except for the very short runway part. Rate of climb is uh, not so good for turboprop except the Q400 which has uh, very big engines. Uh, deceleration, here is the turboprop winner because uh, when you reduce power to flight idle the propellers will create a lot of drag. Um, the jets are heavy, a lot of inertia and very sleek in comparison. Uh, rate of descent, I would say both are good. Uh, we can, in case of an emergency descent, maintain uh, 3,500 feet per minute. Flight idle, 100% RPM and uh, 240 knots. I think the jets are in that range as well. Anyway, this is all for this time. If you have more questions about ATR or aviation in general, also history, please write down in the comments below and I will answer them. Until then, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning!